Hi, this is Sneha Batra from NPZ Law Group, and today I'm going to talk about the new company L1A. And um, recently I posted a video on the L1A basic requirements and um, did not go over what a new company L1A filing consisted of because I wanted to do a separate video on that. So, um, so this video will talk about what those requirements are for the new company. So uh, the Immigration Service defines a new company as one that has been operating less than one year in the U.S. So if a foreign entity has formed a U.S. company that is a new, newly formed company, the, um, the U.S. entity can actually file for a new office L1A visa. And um, the purpose of this category is to allow the U.S. company that's um, recently been formed to bring over uh, a key personnel to basically start up their operations in the U.S. And the Immigration Service gives the, um, gives the individual one year to come to the U.S. and start up operations, hire staff, basically get the business going. So it's a really nice way for um, our clients who have foreign operations to expand into the U.S. And so um, the basic requirement, of course, for the L1A is that there has to be a qualifying relationship between the U.S. entity and the foreign company. So, of course, we'll have to show that the two companies are related. And um, most of the time, our clients form um, U.S. entities that are wholly owned subsidiaries of the foreign company. So that's a really easy way to show that both um, the U.S. and the foreign company are related. So once you establish that, then the next thing is to, of course, transfer money to the U.S. entity um, to show that the U.S. company is ready to start up operations. And um, another key requirement is a business plan. Um, this is actually a very, very important aspect uh, in the filing. The Immigration Service is going to use the business plan to um, evaluate what it is that the U.S. entity is going to be doing. What is the role of the manager or executive that's being transferred? And who are some of the other um, personnel that are going to be required? And so um, the business plan is, again, a very uh, essential part of, of the new company L1A filing. And it's really important to get a, um, a, a professional to do the plan because you really need a comprehensive plan. And um, you know we recommend that you get a five-year business plan to show financial projections. So this, this gives the Immigration Service a really good um, picture as to um, what will be the purpose of the, uh, of the newly formed company. And so in addition to the business plan, the U.S. entity also needs to show that they have a lease. They have to show that they've secured sufficient physical premises to house the new office. And um, an important tip is that Regis office space does not work. The Immigration Service actually does like to see that you are renting commercial space. And um, we've even seen cases where they want to be sure that the space you have is actually going to be sufficient for the number of employees that um, you know will need to be hired in year one. So again, in addition to the business plan, a lease is another key um, aspect to the filing. Um, and then um, in terms of what we have to show for the employees, it's going back to those basic L1A eligibility requirements in that the manager or executive that's being transferred to the U.S. must show that he or she has been working for one continuous year full time for the foreign entity. And so um, again, and they have to be working in an executive or managerial capacity. Um, so. In my uh, L1A basics requirement uh, video, I did talk about uh, what is an executive and a manager, so I'm not really going to go into those definitions um, on this video, but again, they have to be um, working uh, for the foreign company in either an executive or managerial capacity. And then we have to show that the in in individual that's coming to the U.S. is going to um, support 
the, um, the U.S. entity and work in an executive or managerial capacity. So we have to show that in this course of one year, the foreign nationals coming to the U.S., they're going to be hiring staff and they're going to be working in either an executive or managerial capacity. And so sometimes, you know, you have a little bit of um, uh, wiggle room and, and the definition is a little bit lenient because they know for newly uh, established businesses, you're going to be doing additional uh, tasks and duties that may not necessarily be managerial in nature. But um, ultimately, we have to show that the intended U.S. office will support the executive or manager within one year of the uh, of the approval of the filing. Because what happens is, um, once the individual is in the U.S., you have one year pretty much to start up the operations to hire the staff. And that one year period goes by really fast. So it's really critical that um, you carry out the uh, business plan, you know, um, from day one. You really have to get here and hit, hit the, uh, the ground running, as they say. And so um, once you're able to do that, prior to that one year expiring, you have to file an extension. And at that time, you have to go back to immigration and, and demonstrate you know, what you've accomplished in, um, in the first year of operations. So it's really, really important that you carry out all of the things that are outlined in the business plan, hiring employees, getting clients, expanding, um, because if you're not able to show that, the immigration service is unlikely to grant you an extension. So um, I hope that gives you a, a good summary of the uh, new office L1A um, filing. And um, hopefully, um, you know, that was informative. Thank you for watching. Until next time.